Uh, we, we started talking before we hit record about like translating stuff. And I think there's a couple of really good points that we had hit on. I think we should share with, with folks who are studying Tlingit. The, the act of translation is really interesting because when we go on, especially when we go into the big stories, which requires big language. Uh, and so we're gonna find words that aren't documented. And so we're gonna, some of the things that we're gonna have to do is sort of look up what we can. And then sometimes it's kind of straightforward, like, oh yeah, there's a suffix on this word or, or these two things are smooshing together. But sometimes we're gonna find some words um, that we need to actually sort of put together. Like, um, what what do you folks, have you folks heard of Nandachun? I said I wasn't gonna show you this right away, but I'll show it to you right now. So let me give you a, some context. Well, I wanna give you a whole lot of context, but I'll show you where it is. Is um, it related to that? I asked you about this thing this summer, I think, Nande, Nada, this was this phrase that Runak said, and I could not figure out what Nande was. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's right up that alley <laughs> or river. Let me find it. Um, is it north? Is that what it is or something else? I, I think it, so like we, we know the tune, right? So the tune is sort of straight towards something. Ya the tune is straight ahead. But, and you can, kin de chun is straight up. So then you could assume that you can do a yin de chun straight down. And then nan de chun. And so it would be straight, I think it's straight up the river or straight to the head of a body of water, especially like a bay or something. So when we get into like water, like it's got a river has a shock and a uh, shock and a what? So it has a, the head of it and the mouth of it. But then you can also go upstream and downstream. And then I think even in the thing it mind going to the head of the bay is also going upstream because that's the rivers run into the bay. So all of that stuff cycles together. And so here you've got Nandachun away on the yew to the hutch. So some of the things you can do is you say, okay, well I can you know, na is really interesting and so is sa. So na is north and sa is south, but e is also south, but downstream. Uh, and so to sort of pay attention to how those things are, just how they interact with each other, they help to give us a better idea of how they work. But with both of them, when you add something, there's an N that pops up a lot like, you could say ha day and han day, like that N is optional. But there's other times where like a, a consonant will appear when you put something on the end of things. And this is an example. So na is uh, upstream or north, but if you put something on there, like nya, you're gonna get na nya. Um, and if you're gonna say that way, you're gonna get nande. And then you're also gonna get nandachun. So then you would, I don't know if you can go ich de chun. We'd have to probably test that one out. But you could probably go san de chun, which would be straight southward. But getting to like sa and ich and what the sort of general differences between those two would be pretty interesting as well. So like, but when you encounter something like that, so a lot of times I'll go into the verb dictionary and I'll just say, well, maybe nan de chun is in there. And I just type nanda and then nan de chun pops up, nan de chun kuk kat ik. I'm going to paddle straight up the bay. So this ik is to paddle by yourself, especially like going on either side of the boat. And so if you've got multiple pe people paddling, that's aha. So uh, that's one way to start figuring this out. And then generally what I kind of do, it's almost like you got to have these three columns on a document. So the first column would be the shingit. The second column might be the, the kind of literal translation. And then the third one would be the rewrite in English, if you wanted to rewrite it, which might 
sometimes it might work because some of these older stories, like you could tell they're referencing some specific things that aren't even technically in there. And so there's a bit of a reformulation, which is really fun. I think advanced learners of Tlingit, you folks are the, you're the middle ground between English and Tlingit. And the farther you go, the more you sort of wander in between those two realms, which is, it can be frustrating, but I think it can be really fun. And this came about from this Chiwanach. So um, again, so we can go into uh, the dictionary and we'll find Jiwan, which let me blow it up, which is the edge of the hand. And then you could put Nach on there. And so this is saying along the edge of the hand. So you could be referring to like a physical, like something that is going along there, or maybe you had a cut that was along there or something. But then as, as we come back into this story, sometimes we got to sort of contextualize it with what's around it. So this one is um, in Hashuka. So this is Katz by Tsi Hua on page 224. And so we, he, we see it right here. Uh, and so there's, there's some interesting things going on here, which is you got to sort of back up to say like it was seen uh, the footprints and then, you know, we can look up that shoe verb. And these are just sort of exploring ways to take deep dives into, into these stories, which is we got a lifetime of material to sort of wander around in. So the other place I might look at, uh, I looked at this shoe in the... Um, in the verb dictionary. And I think I wanna take a look into Lear's notes as well and see if uh, I can see uh, which just to see if he has an example of it in here. So we go to shu, which is extend, and we get anachna shu, sticking up through something, anachu shu, Achashu, hanging down, achushu, adewu, wushu, atushu. Then it goes to shuch. And if we back up, sometimes we see some more examples. So you don't see it there. And then we can go look at into the verb dictionary and we'll just we'll go look up. Shu, which gets us to extend. We get hang down, um, but we don't really get this uh, which is what we're seeing in this story, which is really interesting too. So this is a, another sort of thing that we end up doing as translators. And as, especially these days, our, our job is harder than it used to be. 10 years ago, you could take this to there were 30 people you could take it to to talk about it. And now there's just a few, but these are some instances of, of what our work is right now, which is sort of saying like, well, here's this verb, so he repeats it, right? And so there's something really important here. And, and the, there's, there could be some subtle differences. Like I would, I would guess to, it's sort of like going it seems like it's going upwards. Um, it's usually- The verb dictionary, Lance says, shu, it extends up there. Oh, there you go. Where'd you find that? On my iPhone. An awesome researcher. It's uh, shu, number one, and there's two forms. Especially a road. Yeah. Yeah. 
Do a sock. Do two ups. Do seen. Do yad yade. You woo to woo to geek. Woo to geek. To geek. Woo to geek. I do take Oh, Kusin. You're you're not on mute. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're just, we're hanging out. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kune, uh, I, th I threw that up in chat. Uh, that's from Keishi. Uh, and she's using uh, Nande, not uh, upstream, but it's up the highway is, is how she's using it there, right? So it's, uh, um, uh, yeah, kind of interesting. It's the, the same, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Where I just thought north, but it's not north. It's, it's up the highway is or up something, eh? Yeah, because I would I would assume a road is a river, so we got to pick which direction is you know going to be non, which is going to be e, which for some it's going to make sense, but then others, you know, and, and especially as we start to use the language more and more and more, uh, these are some things we might need to sort of specify, which is some roads could be real twisty and stuff, but then we're going to see one part as being kind of the headwaters and then the other part being um, being down by the mouth of it. And then, uh, okay. What's the difference between Natide and Nande or is there? Did you say Ikide or? No, Nati. Oh, Nati. Nati. That's a really good question. Um, I would, it seems to me like the preference is to go I don't know, I'd have to test it out. I'd have to see. I don't know. Like whether you're in the river and going up it or whether you're sort of alongside the river and, and following it, which it, I would, that would be sort of my guess. But those are some things like would have to sort of tease out some of these things with some speakers, which would be good. So you last? Ah. On lines. 128, 129, and 130. Okay, I'm trying to understand this sentence here. And is someone asking how does a spirit's foot in, under, on, man's footprints extend up there. So is his question, why in the world does it look like these two beings, one bear and one person are walking together on each other's footprints, under each other's footprints and in? Is that what they're saying? These tracks don't make sense? Well, so some of the things like, and there's other variations of, of the story and, and something that's pretty common, I think, is you, you hit this point where people are following a person's footprints and then all of a sudden they're mixing with the bears and then they're going like this, this part, there's, there's a few things that give us a lot of hints here. Um, so the Keotle shoe is extending upwards. Jiwanach uh, is like along the, what I would, assume if I heard Jiwanach, like, so you got a bear, right? So a bear is walking like this. And this is Jiwan right here. So I would assume Jiwanach, if we're talking about a footprint or a handprint, um, well, especially for a bear, like that would be the outer part of the print. And for a person, that would be the outer part of their, their footprint as well. And so there's a couple, that's one thing. So we're looking at sort of like, the edges of the footprints could be jiwanach. The other thing is we get to the next part and we say wasayu, which is like, what is it? Um, 
you know, how is it kind of a thing. Uh, and, and then we, we sort of get to the whole thing. This, this could be a question or it could be sort of a statement. Yetzi Nate is that brown bear. So this is in the foot. This is for, for me, chusik is in the footprint, right? And then akkach is next to it. So this is ak, just like takdain tan. It means next to something. But you could also say takka. If you'd say like, here's here's a coffee cup and here's a pen. So this pen could be gukha takka. It's next, it's right next to the the cup. And so that's what takka is doing, is saying it is next to it. How was it that in the footprints of the bear, so well, maybe is sort of like a path that is being made by the footprints. Next to it, there's a person's footprints and they're going, the, they're extending the same direction. So all that stuff is sort of compacted into the grammar of the sentence. But for me, the takkach is what Sora says. Those footprints are a lot, they're alongside each other. So that's where the mystery is, is why would a person be walking with a bear? Because right? that's something that triggers some thoughts because that doesn't happen. For, for Shingit, it doesn't happen. Like a lot of us, I think when we we're seeing that, remember that person who was hanging out with the bears all the time and he got eaten? Like uh, a lot of people I was talking to when he was sort of pretty popular, they were saying, he gonna get eaten because you're not supposed to go mess with them. Like all the, like, it just, it goes in direct violation of so many of these stories that we sort of, we've been telling for, you know, thousands of years. Could have asked us, could have asked us, could have saved you. But um, yeah, that's what I see right there. It's a good question. Cheese. Oh. Okay. Who's eating and get you an A? Oh, yeah. We'll share our screen. And we're missing uh, Nila Tola. So that's why we were trying to scramble to redo our share. Um, sorry, here we go. Come on. Okay. Oops. Okay, so. Uh, study group sides. Nik Kuku, Kusin, Kachzin, Ka, Nelatoga, 15, Yehua, Kuka, Des. Ya, Sunday, Ak, Ha, Kusk. Like Rocky Max, you do a sock. Pastor Yade, you would the gate. Hatu Kasakaya Kusti Kach. It de yika a ya a ya turn a sick. I Oh, is it my turn or yours? I kusk ye ye da yek a yat quaste tasty. I kusk ha ya hai ya hai kayish hit. Facebook ka Instagram tunach ka ji yisawu. Rock your mox ka rock your mox 2021 kaishhe. Aga away i an ka tsu Pastu kus i tich ya natuat.
That was our presentation. Benachis. Benachis. Two weeks later. <laughs> oh, Benachis train. Okay, Yeah, was our two yak a Achitasa or tan, where yees at Hashti teasy. Ya days lean for oo. Ya chago ah ah aye. Ya quitchen has to has to cheat eat away. Panachoe Kashake ah, where at Hashti teasy. Yes, the Kadeha or Achwich air on. One panin's gone, Kaya out to what lay. A car away way pavement, Panahaway test tools on ya at Hashti TC team. A car tidy heen aya celebration, Kahwa ach, Dana what lay. Ya a tunaka ya the rich ya ach us goosh a joy. Ya achuni achwawus ach iti de shi an. Koshka kisa nechawe ach at hashti tili. Ye awa wa ach shata kewawus ka. Ach shata we du ina kawani kya hachuni. Ah, ye kwati, ye kwati. Yis, yis, ah, wasatu sakhus tak ayi akaye kwati. Kashi our dark coa, Kesh Kurte away a cheat out the towny. Was our town, was take the cake the car day out ye house in a hechosaka. A joy of two ye keys at Archiu. Kesh out to Oshko, ya ishan dean, ya ye had to a tea at Joy, Kesh at Kashti tea, the Archiu, ye would tea. Will cheese they slim coo as I eat to sa on. Ekrashkashnik, Uk echa. Was at your high a kakisha heat. Or at Kashti teal teen. Yak dat for a good cyclus teen. Kish teal. Yawa. Let's look at the echa at Kashti teal. Yak a. That was fabulous. Great work. Uh, Go ahead, rock your mocks. Let's get to Kahon Ish. We'll do this for a little bit, see how far we can get. And then uh, next Monday, we'll go over this and talk about how to get some of these stories to completion, which is there's so much recorded thing get out there, but it's uh, it's always a heading into the deep waters when you start working with this stuff. You think like, oh, I'll just transcribe and translate this little recording here five years later you know, you're, it's like uh, you emerge from the cave very with a lot more wisdom but uh it can be you know, like it's really good to collaborate on these things because it gets challenging as i'm sure many of you know so let's get into See, I think it's this one. Let's see, can you see it? Can you hear it? I'll play a line. Oh, ah, at the Tikas. Okay, and let me open the chat and tell me what you folks are hearing here. Oh, ah, at the Tikas. Oh, ah, at the Oh, the gas. Oh, 
and what do folks think for the translation. So it is that people moved. That's where they put those house. Hmm. Yeah, migrate. And so if, if we back it up to, we, we just, this was a month ago, I don't know how long it was. We, we set this aside for a little bit longer than I planned. But so he just mentioned a place. I think it does this stuff all the time. So it mentions this place, Devilfish Bay. It's a place called Devilfish Bay. So now, and Tlingit, you've, you've given the name and you've also said, ye do a sagu, yeah. So you really have entrenched it. They were talking about a particular place. And then you say, uh, the ah uh, is saying there at that place. So this is very similar to when it Tlingit names something and then switches to ah, uh, or names a person and switches to du. It'll name a place and then switch to ah. It just does it all the time. And if you're ever, if someone needs you to cook up a name for a place, like, hey, we got to name this place. It's the place where we roast the salmon. Ah, uh, verbi, yeah. That's the way it likes to go. Ah, uh, chat, dut, yeah. The place where people roast salmon. Okay, okay. Hey. So maybe let's even get this one. Capture. So here's one chunk, right? I do think there's a bit of a, there a false start there. Yeah. And so I, and then not only is there a bit of a false start, but there's then when he picks it back up, I think he kind of picks it up a little bit in the middle. So I'd probably say a Yeah, I, I sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, that was kind of confusing for us. We went back and forth, but we ended up kind of at a kua Yeah. What about the second part? Yeah, probably something like this, which is, so there's these, there's a whole set of verbs that have like a singular form and a plural form. Like, so one person talking, we should be expecting um, you kayatunk. And then uh, multiple people talking, we should expect um, you kayatunk, right? So like, th these are just some things that get sort of drilled into our head. Like one person walking is yanagut, multiple people's ya hasnaat. So then as we sort of look at this, 
That is how it goes. But you can also have multiple people talking not at the same time. So you can have fourth person singulars with some of these verbs. So I bring that up because most of the time the fourth person will trigger it into the plural form. But when you're talking about like multiple people doing this on their own, that's still a singular act. And so um, you, you'll see this come up. Uh, and in this case, it's not a motion verb, so it doesn't get as complicated. Uh, but this is what, and so usually you, you'd hear, you don't hear very often, but I'm hearing it here. Yeah, that was, that was really confusing because you're, I guess, because of what you're explaining, because um, we were trying to look at that, you know, like what was the fourth person um, for, but mm -hmm. couldn't figure that out. Yeah, so like would be people tell stories. Right. Yeah. Okay, so if this were it, how would you folks translate this? Yeah. Whatever it is, they do it regularly. Yeah, so we got nooch a couple of times, right? So the verbs are happening all the time. Uh, and a couple of things, like when you put nooch onto something, it's usually gonna push the verb to a minus I. So you do what tunk would be people talk, um, right? And so- He's from cake. He's from cake. Yes. So is that scared? They're scared of it. Yes. Hmm. Then here you've got ade, yeah. So now you got the way verb. The way people always talk. Yeah. And so this is a case where I might sort of, um, the way people, and, and you might throw, and this is a case where like, as you go back and, and keep, you might throw an about it in there, even though it's not there in the thing side. But you could also just leave it like this. Like, so he's, he's referring to like, the way that people talk it's like they're always scared of that place. So he's already set it up. Like he keeps talking about this place. It's a place where people migrate to. So jump ahead. Wait, what now? What we got here? Right now, the octopus. Was it away, way knock? Mm. Away, way knock. I think. Away, way knock. I'd probably say that's a just a false start where he's just saying we twice in a row. But the, again, like it could go either way with some of these. He's talking about the a big knock plane, right? Even though he's just saying knock. Yeah, it's called Christin now, which I, spoiler alert, I already said the name of the story earlier on accident. Let's try not to say it all semester long. Second to last day, I blew it. All right, it's a big long one. Let's, let's listen to it, then we'll come back through. <laughs> Atch 
Yeah, and if you listen to it, so he starts, um, so I'll probably go back here and I'll probably change that to a comma. So there's a couple of things that are pretty wild here. One is he, you hear him switch from an S classifier to an L classifier. And if you go look up this verb, which is going to, you're going to look up K L classifier, ah, right? Um, you're going to find an S classifier version, but I don't think there's an L classifier version of this documented. Is that right? Did you folks find any? I'll drift over to the documents here. So one, this, this is one of these, um, whenever we see E-I-N as a verb root, sometimes we gotta ask ourselves, would that make sense if that's an A-A? Because if you close an A-A, something that ends with A-A, it's gonna turn to E-I-N. If you close something with O-O, it's gonna turn into W-E-I-N. Okay, so Gwen or um, uh, Gwen or Gwen, right? And in this case, Achkushain we aka. So let's go look in the verb dictionary and see if we find it. So we're gonna go look for ah. There's a whole bunch of these. Uh, and then we're also going to be looking for, it should have ka on the front of it with an L classifier. So none of this, it's not going to be this sitting or situated one. We go down to this next one and we've got, this one is to uh, poke your face into something or to sort of push your face somewhere. So this yadza a, I just want to point out is a very useful verb. It's, you could use it for lifting your head up, for ducking your head down, for poking your head through a window, for examining something, kissing. I'm so sleepy. I do not even know what we are talking about. Guhanaka. On that I, when I was listening to it, it I thought it was, said Kusain and then Kusain, like two different, yes. that's what we're getting at, yeah. He said Kusain, which if we, here's that verb right there. If it was Kusain, it'd be this one right here, Kasa'a, which would be to cause plants to grow, to cause water to flow, right? So it's, so what we've got here is we've got this verb, which is for something to grow, like kainain, you know, it's it's growing right now, or the leaves are growing, or the plant is growing, the water is flowing. But that's a zero classifier. So when we switch it to the S classifier, we're doing this very common thing where it says change it to S or L to say something is making it happen. But there's no L classifier there. So we're gonna to have to go into the Lear verbs, if I remember right, we don't find it. We looked in that. We looked in that in the Lear stuff. We didn't find it. It's not. We tried, a, we tried everything, you know. Kasaini, yak, you know, like it, he grows it. He's celebrating it. I couldn't find. We couldn't find anything. So this is a case where I think you have a very similar thing to, to what would be kasain, which would, or kusain, which would be to cause it to flow. But there's something a little bit different about it, which was something I, I wish, 
I would have been doing this work before we lost him, but we can also ask some other elders too, to say, why would it be saying kuchain? And it could be something about the way the water, you know, is, is coming out. So this is, this is what I came up with. And this is some of the investigative work that we end up having to do, is I would say it makes the water gush out onto the lake. Right, because then you see aka, and then there's the the other thing that's really interesting here is the uch, and the uch is a couple. You, what you have in this case is you have the ch marker, which is saying who does the verb. I think it's attaching onto the a, uh. so it's saying it is the octopus. So nak nak is not typically going to get du. It's gonna get ah, ach kush ein we ka. So in this case, I would translate that as it makes the water gush out onto the lake, perhaps. So Kune, why uh, why would you move away from uh, something Roman with, with that verb if the zero and the s are about something growing? Like in the well, verb dictionary, do you, do you see what I'm saying or? Oh yeah, uh, like um, those two other verbs without the L are about growing or something growing. And and why would it all of us? Why would it go back to water gushing? It's, I, it's, I'm just it's, asking you, right? but uh, yeah. So that verb has two interpretations. It's for either a plant to grow or water to flow. But the octopus is not a plant, so then I I think it's got to go to the water flowing. Unless it could be it, it it makes a tree grow or something, but that that's not what I would expect there. Okay. So that yeah, and, and that's a really because if you say the octopus grows, then you'd get what because that's how a living thing grows. You get k u a what you or you know ah k u a what. You know down there by Kihkwan. They have a really strong current that flows right out into the ocean. And so many people forever gone down there. Even that kilo that went down with those three people, mm -hmm. Johnson, you know, they're all, and so many others uh, just gone right there because that current just takes them away or something else. Right. So, there, yeah, there's this devilfish bay and there's a lake. And he's talking about like this. He's certainly, he's, Definitely refer, and then there's going to be this big, we're going to get to it, this big den of the Pustinak. But yeah, the, and there's there's going to be some head, every anytime you do this work, there's going to be some head scratchers where you're like, there's an undocumented verb. So we got to sort of do our, and, but these are things we can go to other speakers with and say, hey, what do you think of this line? What, what do you think? And, and they might give us something like really, like we might find that there's like this whole other thing. Like, yeah. Okay. Why, why wouldn't you say um, the water gush on top of the lake? Oh, yeah. Because isn't that Atka? Yeah. Okay. That it'll classify or two. Like if you think of the word poon, like to sell, and then you add the L classifier, it, it extends it. So it's settles it to whom. So maybe like that word gush is really a good choice because it's as if um, it is gushing, it's extended, it's continuing. Yeah, right. It, it's, it's, it's doing something a little different here, which is uh, just based on other things we see in Shinget, we can make a, a prediction that it's something like this. Yeah. Sheesh. What do you folks hear? Or what did you hear? Well, I like you said, Tayaha Tini. 
Dach Yonder tune away. There's a long high vowel though on that chat. He really like to say chatini too. Is it chatini dach one word? I mean, hini dach is that? Yeah. So probably, let's see, someone's got something to so, Yeah. Oh, I could have been that. Kayahatini Dachyan the true no call or how so Khatini is a it's a salmon stream. So any stream that salmon run up could be called Khatini. So it, it's really interesting too. Like there's Nadai Heen, Kanadai Heen, Khatini, Heen Plain, Heenak. All those refer to rivers. I think Heenak means it's too small for fish to go up. So it's like a little stream. Khatini specifies there are salmon in that. Although I'd imagine like a, if there, there were only trout that went up there, it'd probably still be a khatini, but maybe. Uh, and then nadaihin and kanadaihin have to do with the way that it, the current runs through the river. So, so we got khatini dach. So from the Salmon River, yandachun, straight, straight ahead. Kawaha is a really interesting, like this has got a million uses. It could mean like is located there or is going there. Uh, it happened. It just kind of depends on how it's being used. Kawaha. So Kawaha, um, you know, when we looked it up, it was like, gardening or digging or something like that is that a different yeah let's go take a let's take a look at the verb dictionary here so we do have a kawaha um however if it's third person we would expect the ah uh to be over here and so when we look at this it says transitive that means there's an object and a subject so you couldn't have kawaha with this one. You'd have to have a kawaha. And that would be to dig something up or to uh -huh. garden it or to plant it. But then we see there's another one that's mm -hmm. a state verb, which means the third person would just be nothing, would be unmarked. And then it means to be invisible or to move. But there, there's actually a whole bunch of things that could be kawaha. It's, it's, it's a verb where it's sort of just Put this in your memory banks as one to just watch. Like, just look at how it's being used. It could mean like, you could say, like that's how it happened to us. Uh, or you could say, it's, it's located there, it's, it's there. Um, but it has something, in my mind, it seems a bit more almost mysterious in terms of uh, what it is, as opposed to saying, it is there. So when I was listening to this, um, I kind of went with uh, this and straight from the salmon stream, it is located there that in the Chunoe Kawaha. So it's almost like if we move directly from the salmon stream, we end up at this place. And that's kind of how he's talking about it being there. Um, maybe they're still around too. Real quick. Real quick. Let's 
folks here. Real quick. Is it a cliff? Yeah. Great city of the crew, a tie a car. Great city of the crew, a tie a car. I just said we wouldn't use do, but now we're using do. <laughs> what do I know anyway? How can cheese? Oh, what did he say? Kinde, kinde shaksatan. That's another way to say it. it's steep. Under the cliff, his cave is his cave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, you could translate that as layer as well, because it's like uh, specifically it or den, whichever one. Like if something lives in a cave, then ku would be referring to its layer or den. Like it's an occupied cave, basically. Okay. And so we see some things too, like city. It's a cave, right? So just, just like the patterns that the speaker is using here. Yadaku, it's layer. Atai a. I think he does say kawaha again, but it, it fades out a little bit. <coughs> what does a kawaha mean again? It's like it's there. Oh, kaku. Like a person's lair? Man cave? Oh, yeah, there you go. A <laughs> tie <laughs> <laughs> uh. There it is again. A tight push A. So there's that kush A, and like I think we'll stick with gushing kind of. But what about the rest? So it's pretty unusual to have, it seems like an, you know, so the CH, this, it does one of two things. It either marks who's doing it or it marks what, what they're doing it with, right? So you could say, you could say Khonech Kuhida, or you say Khonech Kuhida Teen, a shower hitch. Khonech was hitting people on the head with a pen. We could also say Khonech 
kuhidech ashawachich. Those are two different ways to say the same thing, right? Because you don't really need an ergative marker there, which marks the subject, but you could have an instrument marker. And they're the same thing that CH could mark either who's doing the thing or what they're doing it with, right? And so it, in this case, it's going right on to a, like, what's really like a directional location term. So this is what I would think for this. Is it's talking about when it goes under, I think. So like, th there's something about the movement of this octopus, like going underneath it, going underneath this cave. And that's a very short, for me, I think it's a very condensed way to talk about what's causing the water to flow or to gush out like that. Uh, okay. Let's see. That phrase is so condensed, a tie push in to say all that. Yeah, right. And so it's well, like when when you do this stuff, like you see, sometimes I think speakers find a pretty short way to get to what they're saying. And so, like for me, like it's already sort of been framed up too, like this octopus and the cave its layer and the like there's there's something really and just using combining this with kawaha and this specifically kush ein verb it's really sort of highlighting that there's something very unusual going on at this place that's what all this stuff adds up to in my mind it's like you got to use some really specific language to even talk about it but you could you could say probably there's probably another way to say it but then by sort of doing this stuff, it, it all creates this sense of mystery when I read it and sort of look at it about like there's, which is like a real point of this story. It's like the people noticed like there was something very strange going on. And, but instead of just really sort of going right to that, it, it builds up by using these pretty unusual sort of ways to phrase things. And you also have like a, master storyteller so he's got to use these these are thing get narrative devices which we've got to sort of figure out ourselves too you know how were they used the the uh word yuck when in for good or something like that could yep. this be using the word cool whirlpool instead of uh, the fish are running, the whirlpool runs underneath, it's underneath whirlpool runs. Hmm. Well, I would expect it to be, um, that's a good question. That's a really good question. So if we go- you said, you said that you can put a noun in front of a uh, in front of a verb instead of a pronoun at certain times and clink it. Is mm -hmm. this one of those times? Hmm. That could like let's take a look. So like let's look in the so in that there is this hot cool, which is a whirlpool. Um, Kuch, in this case, I think is a navel. Um, and so there, there's some places I know over in Sitka that are called like Kuchik and, and stuff like that. And there's these other places called Kuch and something. And so it, it's really interesting that there are place names that pull from this Kuch. Um, the, the other way that you have of saying a whirlpool and chaos is Kuch. And so I, I 
don't know if this would be kush ain, uh, but that's a really, and the only thing that makes me wonder is because you could hear him say the verb kush ain and then switch it to kush ain, uh, and which is also is, is interesting as well because I don't know why it would go with the why it would have the ku in there, right? Like you would expect kanas ein or kanash ein, uh, ya kanash ein, or, or something like that. So there, there are some things going on here that are certainly worth continuing to explore in, in terms of what is going on with this. And it, it's, not, it's not tied flats, slain, kush, slain. Tied kush a. Just sounds like a verb to me. It sounds like kush ein. Kune, uh. we may find out whether this is true or not, but I just had a picture in my mind of this cliff and a waterfall, a big waterfall coming down it, and all that water going down into uh, the pool will make a whirlpool. I mean, you're dumping tons of water there when it's been raining, and that's going to really stir things up. Yeah, the, the one thing, like coming back to, so he, he mentions this octopus, right? and this, this whole story is called Kustinak. So it's about this gigantic octopus, like way bigger than any octopus that we could sort of reasonably imagine. Like it's, it is gigantic. And so we're gonna get to this thing. And so the word Kustin, means like monstrous or giant. Uh, it, it's also, there's other things that can be a pustin. Like uh, historically there was a giant rat. There was some other giant creatures, pustin, cisk, I think a, a giant owl. But so this is more than just like, a, like you, you might like get a, a, like a giant octopus, like a really big one, right? But pustin would mean like, it's kind of larger than life. Like that's why there's this, this whole story exists about it. And because of that, I do think we're talking about the octopus causing these disruptions in the water. Um, but we, we do have, and you know, so the people are frightened and, and Shingits are nervous about waterfalls, but we're not really scared of waterfalls that we would sort of have this story. And then we would, I would expect the word cause to pop up but like mm -hmm. you could just say there was a waterfall and the waterfall was coming in so for things to flow downward or something like that and so in the absence of those i would probably still think about this octopus but this is and again sometimes as you're doing this translation work too like you just kind of you got to settle on something and then you move on but then sometimes you come back and you say, oh, okay, in the context of all this other stuff, I could see what was going on here. Or this work will drive you crazy because you'll translate something, then you'll listen to it two years later and be like, how could I not have heard that? It's plain as day oh. now. <laughs> so welcome to the club. You know, when I'm listening to some of these two, like I hear one thing and then when someone says like, you were just saying like hot, with a T on the end. As soon as you said it, I listened to it again. I heard it. I was like, oh. Well, I also have a question about translation too, because like, like particularly in this sentence, and he does it a couple other places in the story where he says something and then he corrects himself. Um, but when you're translating, like on this one, you know, he started to say, um, do you not put that there because that's actually what he said and then correct him? Or are you just doing what he meant to do? It's a really good question. So for, for some people, they like to put every single thing that they're hearing in there because a learner could come in and say, well, I heard this other thing. How come that's not there? And I, I do understand that. Um, for me, I tend to sort of start to move things towards like, how would I publish this? And then there's, there's certainly other things you could do. So another thing that you could do is you could go back to uh, the first time 
he sort of mentioned it. And what I could do is I could put a number one there. Um, and I could also do this when I move it into whatever sort of thing I'm gonna publish it into. Uh, for like video subtitles, I would probably just leave it the way, I would probably mm -hmm. put it together in a finished form. In the published one, I would probably also do that, but I might sort of say, and, and I might use some other marker here, like um, in, in linguistics, like an asterisk usually marks like some kind of error, but you could also just put like the word note in here. And then later you could go in and you could make footnotes. And under the footnotes, like this would be a really good footnote because the footnote could also say, this is our best estimate of what this, what he's saying. This is an undocumented verb that we think is a verb because we hear him say it kus ein the first time and then switch it to kus ein, but we can't find that verb anywhere. And so that's, that's where the notes come in. And if you look at Hashuka, the notes are like in the very end of the book, where I think the Raven book were suggesting that notes go at the end of every story so that you can read the story. And if you want to look at the notes, you can. Uh, when you get to the end of the story, you can also review it. And so it's always a question of like, who are we translating for? And, and a lot of us, like this translation work teaches us so much about the language. And then we want to sort of share that knowledge with other folks. And that's where I would sort of like, in the, if, like if I did a subtitle version for a video, like I wouldn't even put a footnote on there because it's just, it goes by way too fast. But then if I had a printed version that would accompany that, like this is how I think we should do it in the future, is we'll have a, a video or audio recording that we could make into a video with subtitles. And then we have a printed version that has like a the deep dive into things. And I know, uh, Quite. Now, he always wanted to have a glossary with everyone too. Like, so you'd have this, you could look this up at the end, like you'd have hook in there and you'd have ha in there and you'd have like a, a series of these things. I, I, I agree. I really do like documenting it verbatim just because for me learning, otherwise I'd be having to go back and search it all over again and try to go through the same thing we just did, mm -hmm. trying to understand. Okay. I do think there's room for different versions um, because I, I would love to see the stories presented in ways that share the power of them. That's a different audience than for, for learners who are analyzing every phrase. Yeah, and, and like these are great conversations for the language community because there's a small but growing pocket of folks who do a lot more than just read the English, right? And, and who are really like a real part of our goal is to be able to tell us a story like this, to tell this story and others like it in the way that the old timers did long time ago. And so one of the things that Kahuan Ish would share with me is that when he was younger and was fishing a lot, and hunting, he would always bring food to the old people. And then they would thank him by sharing. And he would listen to them a lot. And he would listen to these stories and the way that they talked and the way his dad used to teach him and, and train him up to talk. And so he said, because of that, he knew all this stuff. And that, that's what he wanted to share. Um, so then part of our goal is to get to this level ourselves. And for some of us, we, we might get there to be like, well, I can understand what's going on. But for others, we, we need folks who can um, do this stuff as well. Yeah, exactly. Is, uh, we, can, we can put those things in there and, and just in terms of how we, you know, so if we went through, we could go. <laughs> At Cus Ain, or at Cus Ain, or Arca. 
So then you could settle on, so you don't lose that. And then you could sort of, that also shows like coming back to it. Like that's that's gotta be just switching to the L classifier of that same bird. Okay. You know, I wondered too on um, some of these recordings, like we've talked about people who talk in riddles, usually it's like at a queef or something, but what if they did while they were telling some of these Kachnik when they're being recorded and they're just, you know, that's how they talked, it's how they knew how to refer to it. So what if it had a whole different meaning altogether or have you come across that at all? Like, Yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of things like, and some of them are these sort of parables, you know, like they'll just like even a, a, a Qunana thong would break and or I'll just go along as a bailer. Like there's these certain things that are very specific phrases that they really point towards. Uh, and then there's other things like um, sometimes as we sort of uh, like if, if there's just something really particular going on with the language that we want folks to pay attention to, like drop a note in there, especially as we go forward. So there's going to be like the audio version or the video version, and there's going to be perhaps subtitles with that. And then there's going to be a published version, and then there's going to be the notes for the published version. And for me, like I'm always thinking we got to do this work for the learning community, like so that as folks come along, they'll say, well, why, why was that? And so this is where, and as we go back, like one potential project that we should be sort of talking to some folks about is republishing some of these other, like hashuka, like so that we can have uh, probably a side by side, playing it in English, so we don't have to go, the, the back and forth pages, like, that, that works at a certain time, but I think we're, we're getting more advanced as a language learning community. We wanna see them side by side so we could do a lot more of that work back and forth. And then we might say, hey, let's put a note here. Like, look, look at how cool this thing is. Like we just talked about this. Uh, and so we can add a few more notes in here, not to like erase what they did or, or to do anything like that, but just say we can, we could keep adding to this work by mm -hmm. being learners ourselves. And there's really fun stuff. Like, and some of these things, like, I don't know if it's fully in here. I'd, I'd have to check the notes, but the Kuk story by Robert Zuboff, that's two different recordings that are put together mm -hmm. that are not even about the same thing, really. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so maybe that needs to be divided into two different stories. And then the, uh, the Yesh Nawu story of uh, Hoots Kayatuka, Hoots Kaya Kutlikati Shawat. That's recorded in two different sessions. And, and that should also be kind of noted too. And so putting the, and then getting the audio versions for these together so that folks can read it, listen to it, study, and do some of these deeper dives. Um, I'll show you folks one more thing before we go tonight. So another way to take a deeper dive into this stuff, uh, we're gonna take a closer look at this one on uh, Wednesday for the super class. But so if we look at a story like Tonk, uh, uh, one of the things that I've been messing around with is, um, you know, fully acknowledging the speaker and teaching, making sure that everybody knows who they are and who their father's people were and where they're from and when they lived, what they look like, you know. But then going through and saying, here are the parts of speech that we're going to really look at here. And then we're going to take this story and uh, let me make sure I'm still sharing sound. Okay. So then you could take this and you could say, let's listen to the first sentence. So we listen to it twice, then we go through and we say, This is what he said. Guide you to Sagan. 
a scale and then we can sort of blow it up into all the pieces so here's the color key over here and we see like the, the top line it's still all intact but it starts to color code the line underneath it it pulls them apart and then the line underneath this is not really doing uh it's a loose so this this part is called um the gloss so it's not really saying like it's just saying like here's what awe kind of means right and here's what achyaku yikt and it used to be called so it says it used to be called as opposed to saying thus it someone you know you could do that one as well but for for me this is sort of a the shallow dive into the glossing which is just sort of saying when you do this that's what you get and then there's uh the translation down here in the right hand corner so here's yet another thing that we could do with these. Okay. Oh, I really like how this looks. It reminds me of the way a scholarly presentation of Shakespeare is. And okay. it has that sense of honoring what the original is and then trying to explain it to people now. Um, but mostly, I wonder if you could give me this slide so because I love the color coding and I don't want to invent my own. Oh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'll put a draft of this uh, up. And uh, how far did I get? I got kind of far. Any chance Where? that like the community, the language, like, you know, those of there. you and Jeff Lear and other people who are doing this at a higher level, you guys can all agree <laughs> on some of this no. structure. Just check in, just check in. Oh, these are scholars. I, I know. I, but the toughest are, I've ever did was with academics because it's hard to get them to, to uh, share and work together. <laughs> well, you know, they had this thing called the French Academy and it worked for a while, but that was France. <laughs> You're saying our job is not to fight with each other? Okay. I, no, I just I just remember when I created the um you know the um the National Research Center and I called together academics across the country. That was the toughest the toughest meetings I had. Yeah, well I I do think the next step is sort of looking at some of this stuff and then figure out what makes sense for future learners. And then let's come to consensus on what to call things. Yeah. Um, like just in terms of like, how can we increase the speed and success rate of getting new speakers and like, what's going to make the most sense. And, and I do think there probably should be a few meetings, like, be, because not only if you get to the top of the sort of language folks, there's some disagreements there, but if you get to the top of the organizations, there's some disagreements there. And we've got to figure out like, sort of like how to get to these things um yeah his son wrecked his boat so um that was in the chat but yeah it, it would be good I, I do think these are getting pretty set although there's um and, and if you read some of uh jeff's stuff and carrie's stuff like they might not be using the same terminology on a few of the things but i think most of it is getting pretty aligned well, if you guys ever get in the stick, just bring in some learners so that you can we can help shape the future. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it's probably time to like to start having sort of annual meetings on the Thlingit language and, and figuring out like, yeah, I think there should be a lot of Thlingit people in charge of what where things are going. And sort of like, as we sort of become the ones who are steering where the boat is going, I, I think it's gonna increase some of the success rates. Yep. Cool. You know what I'd really like to see? I'd like to see the, uh, the way people say things in different areas in the dictionaries as well. Uh, like, <clears throat> um, squirrel and then i heard it when i was talking to someone two days ago 
they were saying uh, initially in the sentence kasak and yes. i i was listening and i was like i realized that it must have been saying kanatsak but i believe that it would be really nice to like you know the way some things are said in different areas added in just so we all know i i don't know i was just was thinking about that the other day okay uh well let's so that's a good example so here's kasak uh, and then if you, I get a sort of, like I'm trying to put the variance up here, but so when you see the letter T, that means that's how they say it in Teslin, which is also usually all, often includes Karkross. Those are pretty similar dialects. Uh, and then Kanatsak would be kind of everywhere else. And so if you go, and another one would be going down here, so here's like a whole bunch of different ways to say a word. And so, but also just saying like Karkross, Atlin, Teslin, Angu, Yakutat. So you will see some of that stuff. Okay, so that, I guess I was looking at it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I beat you to it. That's all but good. That's, that's a good point is like, just trying to sort of maintain some of that stuff too, because sometimes you have like a, yeah, kanatsak, but then you'll go somewhere else, you hear katsak, and you're like, what? But it, it's the same thing. You okay? Do you use do sagen only if the person died or the boat sunk or something else happened to the boat that it no longer exists? Yeah, I, I would assume, I mean, it could be something like the name got changed or somebody bought it and they changed totally changed the name but it, once i hear you do saga and i assume something's got it's a goner but there there are other cases you know uh th there could be an instance that let, like let's say someone has a thinget name and they really make a big mistake and the clan says taking that name back you know it, it could happen that that would be a you case right there would be like but you'd probably have to talk about it a little bit more but if i heard you just talking i would just assume that whatever it is it's gone now and is that a is it like when a person dies when you say do sagan it, it shows respect for that person that passed away by saying do sagan yeah is, yeah is it the same for a boat and i've heard speakers who say i don't like to say you do sagan because i still call them that and so, but I've also heard speakers like uh, Chukatin, she used to say, which is like, it's not like it's not her dad anymore, but it's definitely, it's just communicating like they are gone. So, okay. yeah. And you did say that you're going to share with us um, that uh, document that you just, you've been working on, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll put up uh, where it's at right now. Perfect. I'll light the fire and try and get it finished. <laughs> hey. One of my winter break projects, that and Duktut and uh, more dictionary updates. And I think that's it. But I got to do a little bit more on like teaching verbs too. Like and doing. I understand you're getting ready to print too. Yeah. I'm putting the fire under you. <laughs> <laughs> my butt's really going to burn up yeah. <laughs> uh, okay folks where's that link I, I don't see the link yet I thought you would put it in chat oh for that no I gotta um Put it into a PDF and then put it. Oh, up. okay. Like, we will wait. Thank you. Yeesh. I was like, I, we were somewhere in, in New York and we ordered a sandwich, and someone happened to have like a very similar order to ours, and they called out a couple of things, and we thought it was really fast. And we said, um, "Oh yeah, there's a couple of other sandwiches." They said, "We are we're cooking them." They got really upset. <laughs> it was just a misunderstanding, but we got the New York uh, treatment. It was pretty fun. Okay. okay. Jeez, folks, we'll see you on Wednesday for the super class. You folks are amazing.
Hey, brother man, I'd like to show you something at the end of class. Okay. Hey, George. 